Obviously, that offer was declined, but that's how they suck you in basically 70 some thousand dollars over what they're going to offer. They allot that $40,000, but they don't do the work. Real estate agent man. Well, hi, Jen. <laughs> hi. And close to the mic, please. Hi. Ah, there you go. <laughs> That's how this works. Uh, is this your first time ever in a podcast? This is my first time ever in a podcast. And how much do you enjoy being behind a microphone and on a video camera? Not at all. Well, then I <laughs> I am grateful that you are doing this. I know that you are going to add value to our listeners' lives uh, with this conversation because of some of the personal experiences that you've had that we're going to talk about here. And and we're going to start with one that I think most people uh, have can probably relate to. And, and that would be, you know, you get a, a letter in the mail or a phone call or something from somebody who says, hey, I am looking to buy your house and I will make you a very fair offer and it, it'll be super easy. So if they make enough phone calls in a day or in a week or in a month, somebody, there's going to be enough people who say, sure, come on out. Mm -hmm. And probably a good percentage of those are not going to end up selling their house, but there is some percentage that must say yes in order for this to make sense for them, right? Because this is, this is one of the ways that they're making their income. And, uh, and so you recently had uh, the house, well, you were responsible, if I'm saying this right, for the sale of a friend's house. Correct. Right, okay. Uh, and that friend works all the time and you were the one being available uh, to you know, have the conversations and figure out what was going to happen. Of course, you knew a real estate team that you trusted, so that wasn't an issue. But you did, uh, in fact, tell me, did you receive a letter, or uh, how did this play out to where you started to work with a potential company like this? Okay, so this friend of mine wanted to be quick, easy, didn't want to do showings, didn't want to do an open house, didn't want to go through you know, the time that it would take to sell the house because it needed some work and it needed the yard to be cleaned up and all this different stuff. So the thought was, well, I've seen all these advertisements for these places that will just buy your house. And they didn't care if it meant they got less money for their house because it was less work. So I was asked to help because I have this, you know, experience with real estate and I did suggest we go with Steve and lift the house, but um, they preferred it to be quick and simple and just see what the offer was. So we went with the online company that um, came up. Am I supposed to say who they are? Yeah, you can say who they are. Okay. So, I mean, you're not insulting them, right? You're just talking about the process. I'm just giving the facts. Right. So I said, let's try Open Door. And that's a very popular one. There was a few houses in the neighborhood that had used Open Door. So I was curious to, to see how it would play out. So you go online, you put in the information about the house. They ask you, you know, all the speci specifics and the year, etc. So then they give you a... Um, a quote that or, or like an, an it's for? more of an estimate an estimate an estimate preliminary of, estimate that's the word i'm looking for a what estimate like a preliminary estimate okay like this is what we think we will probably be able to give you for your home correct okay so the estimate for this house that they originally gave online you know we're talking ai bots no people um 277,000 so after you start the process, then they want to dig in with more information so they can look things up and they send an inspector out to do an outside inspection, but this company doesn't do an inside inspection. So the guy came out, he did the outside inspection. He seemed pretty positive, you know, didn't really have any big issues. Um, so then we get notice from the company that their offer had changed to 258000 so 19,000 less? Actually, that was that offer was after speaking to a person but before the inspector came out. Okay. Then the inspector comes out, just looks around the outside, he's there like 15 minutes maybe. And then they in about a week they send over their final offer. 
Well, their final offer was one hundred and ninety nine thousand dollars. So I, I questioned that. I didn't realize <laughs> it was that low. OK. I said, how did you come to this number? And they said, well, we do a list of um, our home inspection. We don't do it in person. We just estimate how much we think. This isn't exactly how they worded it, obviously. But basically, they're estimating how much they think they're going to have to put into it for repairs based on its age and size. So I asked them to go ahead and send me that and let me know so that I could see exactly what they're allotting for. So they sent me over an estimate of $41,000 worth of repairs. And on that estimate, it basically listed every single thing you could possibly do to a house. (laughs) Paint it inside, outside, replace the roof, replace the flooring, you name it. I mean, I'm talking HGTV makeover here. So, and it was like, I think $10,000 to paint the exterior and $10,000 to do this and $10,000 to do that. And I'm like, you're estimating things to be wrong that aren't wrong. So obviously that offer was declined, but that's how they suck you in basically 70 some thousand dollars over what they're going to offer. And then from what I've heard others have experienced, they allot that $40,000, but they don't do the work. Yeah, we, we've actually seen that, and I'm not going to name the company. could be Open Door. It could be any company, right? Uh, but we ended up uh, doing some uh, personal work with a manager for one of these companies, and that's the person who told us. He said, you know, what the process is, at least of that company, uh, was that they'll tell you that this is all the money they're going to spend on it, and then they go in and they just don't. You know, and and from what I've seen, I've got an example here that I wanted to share. Uh, I brought something for show and tell. This house, I think, was a prime example of what you were just talking about. I knew that the woman was going to be selling the house. And I stopped by to meet her uh, at the request of her next door neighbor. I normally don't do cold calls, as you know, but the next door neighbor said, hey, I was talking to her about you, you know, uh, I really think you should go stop by. So I did, and uh, she was in there kind of cleaning up the place a little bit. I mean, not really cleaning, it was more organizing for an estate sale. And so then I went into the estate sale, I got to see the condition of the house, uh, and I, you know, I knew what I felt it would be worth on the market, and then the next thing I know, it's sold for $310,000, which was considerably less than what I felt she could get for it. But she never even had that conversation with me. And she sold it to a company. Uh, it's not one of the major companies. It's a pretty big company in the Sarasota area. Uh, but So she sold it to them, not going in the MLS, no real estate fees involved. So she saved that money. She sold that for three ten. They listed it seven days later without doing any work to it for three ninety nine, and eleven days later sold it for three eighty. Now, even at say she would have paid six percent commission, which is about the most anybody pays for commission, and you know in this market, uh, she would have still taken to the bank forty seven thousand dollars more if she had just said. Hey Steve, would you list my house? Because I would have absolutely listed it for three ninety nine. Mm-hmm. And see what happens, right? So, for ease, and that's what we're assuming is the reason why she did that because she thought it would be easy. She gave up forty seven thousand dollars because it was seventy thousand dollars difference. So I'm from that seventy. I'm subtracting the fee she would have had for hiring a realtor. Right. Yeah. That's just crazy. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> when when people say that, you know, a realtor can pay for themselves, we can. Yeah. Just give us a chance, right? Uh, and, and so this is this is just an example I will never forget. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I'd be willing to do a little more work and a little more waiting for $47,000. Yeah. And the waiting, <laughs> w- w- it could have been a month. Right. You know? I mean, this example that we're talking about here, um, going back to it, we called another company. We called OfferPad. They offered 236000 but they wanted to come out and they wanted to do an actual home inspection that they pay for. Um, the guy was trying to get more paperwork, more commitment. I told him, I said, 
I'm not committing to anything else. They actually had you sign a contract that was a real estate contract enforced before they would give you an inspection. I told him I wouldn't continue the process until I had final numbers from him because if the number went down, we weren't going to take it. And the next day I got an email from him that he was going to withdraw the contract because the house only had one bathroom. So that tells me that they were planning on dropping the price even lower and he didn't want to spend the $500 for the inspection. It certainly appears that. that way. Not something we can necessarily prove, but right. why else? Right. Why else would they do that? And they use the one bathroom as the excuse. excuse. So after all that, I was able to convince this person to use Steve and list the house. Yes. And the house was under contract in three days. Yes. Yeah, for actually 250 For 250 Yeah. And so, you know, at that point, uh, the commissions were paid, and mm -hmm. they still got more money than either one of those companies were willing to pay them. And did not have to go through weeks of showings or anything else. It was one open house, it was sold. Yeah. So, of course, not all realtors can necessarily get you those results. <laughs> no, I'm just, just kidding. Yeah, I mean, and, and this is stuff that I think people really need to know how this can play out. I think that a, a homeowner is doing themselves a disservice to assume that they can't get a lot more for their house than an investor mm -hmm. is willing to give. So, because if there's one thing I have learned about investors through the years is that they, they're in this to make a profit. So if they see a profit there, mm -hmm. you could also see a profit there. Absolutely. You know, and these people, they make it sound like they're going to come in and do this stuff. I mean, I wonder how many, like if this person here that sold this house and they did nothing to it, you look at the pictures, it's still got their stuff in it. And it was some bad stuff. Yeah. And this was a completely <laughs> dated house from 1980. Yes. Not a single update. Look, I mean, original carpeting, countertops, cabinets, mm -hmm. toilets, everything original from 1980. And they still sold it for $399 because that's what the market will bear. You know, you fix that house up, you go in and spend seventy five hundred thousand on it. Well, it's going to be worth half a million dollars in this market, but you can't spend that money on it and sell it and make a profit. So right. the person who bought this house can go in and fix it up, clean it up and 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 be in a fair market value home at this price. But anybody who is an investor, anybody who's trying to buy these homes, they're doing it so they can make a profit. Yeah, you're giving up the profit so that somebody else can make it. It's mm -hmm. your house, it's your investment. I don't understand why you would so willingly do that. You want to own a place like the ones you've seen. Maybe near the beach or a golf course.